Hi everybody, this is Brian James from Rhino3D.com and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to model tufting like you would find on furniture. So we're going to start with a plane and this is a planar NURB surface. I'm going to make it centered and use zero as the location. I'll hold down shift and click and that makes it square. I'll then run the rebuild command on it and change it from its default of 2x2 two two to 5x5 five degree 3 by degree 3. I'll turn on the control points with F10 or the points on command and I'll take this center point and drag that down. I'll then take these points here holding down shift to add to the selection and I'm going to drag those up. Those are going to be the highest points. And then for the third selection I'll take these four points and drag those up. Those will be the second highest. Taking that first central point, we'll use the weight command and increase the weight. This is how much power it has over the shape of the surface. Inevitably, I have to move that up as well. After the fact, to adjust to taste. And for this grouping of eight points, you can change the scaling with the gumball in the z-axis to customize what that's going to look like. So something like that and then escape or F11 to turn off the control points. I'll use the array command next and array this 3 by 3 by 1 and use a couple end O snaps there to get it lined up perfect. I'll select everything here and I'll click and release on the rotation handle for the gumball in the z-axis and type 45. A lot of times when you see tufting it's at a diagonal so what I like to do at this stage is create a square module that can be repeated that represents the diagonal tufting. If we go into our top view like this and I'll go into shaded, I'll make a rectangle here and I'm going to use end O snap, end O snap, and then that automatically shows me this midpoint. And I'm using this same trick, just mouse over, mouse over, it finds the mid in order to create this rectangle square that I then use to trim. And I'll trim off the parts I don't need. And these guys can get deleted. And we don't need that curve anymore, so I'll delete that as well. And then join those together. Back in perspective, we'll repeat the array command 3 by 3 by 1, so we can take a look at what this module patterns into, like that. I'll select all of that and join it together. And the last step would be to flow this using flow along SRF onto some other surface. Um, to make this more interesting, let's flow it onto something circular, like a small stool. So I'm going to make a circle. I'll extrude this down to give myself a temporary extrusion surface. And then I'm going to use the patch command and I'm going to select the extrusion edge, not the curve. You want the edge because you want that tangent direction. And I'll make this patch surface 6x6 six six and I'll incorporate the adjust tangency option. If you click preview, you can see how it'll puff up based on that. I'll then take this surface here and if I turn on the control points for it, you can see how they are stretched right at the top, but it is a four-sided rectangular surface. What we want is as little stretching as possible here so we can run the rebuild command on this and I'll rebuild it to something that doesn't make sense for editing but for a, a flow target it works out quite well. So now when we have all of these control points relatively the same distance apart over this area we're not going to get stretching in our pattern. And lastly, we'll use flow along SRF, and I'll choose plane as my base surface, and I'll go from lower left to upper right, and then my target surface will be this guy. Now because these are NURB surfaces, it is recalculating the continuity between those edges in the poly surface. And I'll add a material to it, and let's check out what it looks like in rendered display mode. And that's how you can do tufting 
with a NURB surface in Rhino 7. Thanks for watching.